Using most libraries for the first time usually sucks, but it doesn't have to be this way. Iron is a specific library for a specific language for a specific use case. But we can all learn from it. It's a simple, no bullshit library with great documentation. So let's review it and talk about documentation from the onboarding and user experience perspectives. Here's how it usually goes. I see an unfamiliar library in the imports or dependencies or a colleague suggests me one and I look it up and go to the GitHub page. First plus right away when opening the readme is the concise description. What the library does, why I should care and a bit of how. It says that Iron is a lightweight library for refinement types in Scala 3. It gives a short description and then it also adds why should I care. It's all about catching bugs at, at compile and runtime. And on top of it, it just tells us how it does it. It's seamless, no black magic, and it's extendable. The library does not assume that I know what it is. It doesn't assume what it does. It doesn't even assume that I know what the refinement types are. It's impressive how often libraries don't do this, and I spend significant time jumping through the docs and forums just to figure out what the library is used for. Readme also links to the microsite. We'll return to it shortly. Uh, let's scroll a bit to see the rest. The next part is a little example. It showcases the imports and elementary usage, so we know what to expect. To me, it seems like the snippet is small enough to be quickly digestible, but still representative. We see how to refine a type, in this case double as a positive, and right away we see how to use it at compile and runtime. It's pretty great. And then it briefly demonstrates error messages, dependencies for both SBT and MIL, platform support, adapters, and useful links. If this is not a perfect, to-the-point readme, I don't know what is. Quick side note, what I typically want from the library side or the documentation. When it's my first time using a library, first thing I want is getting started guide. I want introductory information every developer will need, such as an overview of the library and its components, a hello world tutorial, and an introduction to the fundamental concepts. And I don't want to read a whole book full of definitions right away. And bonus points if the quick start docs are usable for returning users. For example, when setting up a new project. Then I expect some tutorials and concrete topics. Is that books that I didn't want to read right away? I want to dive deeper into the library as I'm getting familiar with it and wish to extend my usage or knowledge. I don't mind if the documentation holds my hand while we are walking through the steps at this point. But when I'm already working with the library, I want how to guide an example. I want task based instructions for how to do something or solve common problems. I expect conceptual content organized by topics or tasks. And I want an API reference. I just want readable API docs. The actual public API, not the internals of the sausage. It should show how to create things, interact with things, and so on. I don't want to see macroses and boilerplate and all the stuff that I cannot directly use. With this in mind, let's see what Iron's site has to offer. Well, first of all, it offers a good day-night toggle. Who doesn't like a good day-night toggle? But the welcome page exhibits links to navigate the docs and some code examples. The overview page is an introduction to the fundamental concepts, the purpose of the library, why refined types matter, and the use cases. It also includes a tiny hello world snippet, which we'll try pretty soon. This page is a big part of the getting started guide I wish for. And then the links to the getting started page to set up and start using Iron, and a references page for details about the concepts of Iron. Getting started provides the rest of the getting started guide. Dependencies. Notice that the header in the corner shows the library version and even allows us to navigate the docs at specific points and common imports. A nice thing is that import section covers what they bring, which implicit and functions. For example, when we import iron, it imports implicit conversions from raw types, utility methods to refine stuff, and comments constraints, and even shows the preferred styles of important stuff post in the code base and documentation. We can go to the next steps or on the same level, we see that there is a code of conduct and contribution to Iron. Uh, at this page, we don't care. We just exploring the libraries and not planning to contribute anything right now. So let's go to the reference. This section of the docs is called Iron References. And here we can find detailed documentation about the main concepts of Iron. But note that this is not the API reference I introduced before. From my perspective, this section includes tutorials and how to guide. Iron type, refinement methods, constraint and implication. This covers the main data types and how to use them. After going through this section, I could start using the library. I felt confident enough and didn't feel like a learner anymore. These docs have concrete practical examples. For example, iron type 
explains what iron type is, what's the base type, what's the constraint. Then it gives us a concrete example for the integer. Then it shows us how to use it, how it compiles or not, and then the sugaring and stuff. Creating new types, on the other hand, shows how to create no overhead new type using opaque types, which is excellent, just a different type of documentation. I think this is a how-to guide. It doesn't fit the rest. It's not something a first-time user needs right off the bat. And speaking of how-to, the last section documents how to connect external modules, how to add support for JSON decoders, how to support validation, and so on. These modules provide out-of-the-box features to make Iron work seamlessly with other ecosystems. Each page includes a short description, dependency, imports, and how-to guide or an example. We can seamlessly switch to the API docs, the API reference we work with while using the library. The definitions are quite concise but easy enough to navigate. Somehow it's more pleasant than a typical Scala doc. I usually avoid Scala docs, I don't understand how to navigate them and just go to sources, but this seems to be pretty good. So while we're here, let's try using this not constraint. We can copy the code from the hello world example and modify it. First, I'm gonna grab the dependency and I'm gonna grab the version 2.1 and then I'm gonna grab the hello world from the overview. Okay, I'm gonna paste this hello world into my main, adjust it a bit to have variables and stuff. First one, doesn't compile as expected because this is a string, not an integer. Second one, does not compile the constraint error. Value minus one should be strictly positive. Pretty good. So let's use a not we saw in the reference. Okay, now we have the opposite effect. This one does not compile it anymore because it's a positive. And this one compiles because it's a negative. So the requirement types has an opposite effect. What do you think is going to happen now with double not? I'll leave this exercise to the watcher. To make it more interesting, let's add a JSON support using Cersei. To get encoders and decoders for refinement types, we have to add iron source module. I'm going to use the same version as before, 2.1.0. It also doesn't say which source dependencies the example relies on, which might be a hurdle for beginners or people who have not used either libraries together. But I'm just going to go to the source library and grab the first examples I give, the core, generic, and the parser. I'm going to grab all the imports from the, this tutorial, both for the iron and for the source. This one still doesn't work. Let's give it a proper H and convert this one to the JSON, which gives us a JSON. Nothing surprising. What if we try other way around? Let's try to decode this user that we just encoded and also try to decode it when the number is positive. In the first case, we get back the user. And then second case, the decoder fails because it should be negative number, not the positive one. So what do we have at the end? Does the expected matches the actual? When it was my first time using the library, the getting started guide was covered by overview. Overview covers an introduction to the fundamental concepts and a tiny hello world. Getting started covers a dependency and common imports, which are also handy for returning users when I was returning to copy paste the dependencies and imports. What about tutorials and concrete topics? Some pages from Iron references cover main data types and how to use them which are good enough to get me started and get the confidence to work with the library. And when I'm working with the library, how to create new types from Iron Reference show how to do a concrete thing, and modules show how to support external modules, how to support interoperability with other stuff. And so last but not least, API docs, also known as Scala docs, show how to create things, interact with things, and so on. And the funny thing is that I wasn't even a fan of refinement type libraries. For some reason, I used to believe that they are ugly, and there are usually other ways to do what they do, for example, check if the string is empty. But then the other day, the colleague was migrating some code to Scala 3, and found out that the refinement libraries they were using had no support for Scala 3. I heard of Iron, and I suggested taking a look. And we were both pleasantly surprised. The library and its documentation looked so neat. I just wanted to start using it and sharing it with everybody else. Because it's a review, I'm going to give this library 4 docs out of 4.